Welcome back to Sports Daily. Daryl Reed alongside my co-host, Michael Artis. And on the line, we have a very special guest, Raheem Brock from the Seattle Seahawks, 10-year NFL veteran. Raheem, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, man? How you doing? Pretty good. You, you I'm sound? Kinda, uh, I'm just training and everything, you know, waiting for this lockout to be over. What what things are you doing to keep yourself in shape and to get ready for the end of the lockout? Uh, I'm basically doing the same thing I do every year, you know, um, just my regular conditioning and lifting off-season workout stuff. So um, I, I wasn't one of the guys that go that that go work out with the you know at the facility. I always, I mean, for the past six years, I've been doing things on my own. So. I got a pretty good routine and add a couple things in here and there, and you know it's been working for me. You sound like you you just woke up. Is it is it a late morning for you? You celebrate Cinco de Mayo out there in Philly? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was out a little bit. <laughs> now, Raheem, what uh, w- will you step it up to a kind of three a day workout if the NFL lockout continues into what would be training camp? Uh. Definitely, definitely not. Um, you know, me, I think training camp is a little overrated. Um, you know, I have, I've had my best seasons when I didn't even participate in camp, you know. So, um, I just think, uh, I, don't, I, I don't mind missing training camp. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you know, I'm going just, to just do my regular conditioning, and then um, I may step up the running a little bit, and that's about it, but I won't do no – no, any, any type of two days or anything like that. Well, I'm with you. I don't like training camp either. Not, not yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I miss training camp. There's three times I miss training camp. You know, I had my best season, so. So, so how how tough is it for you as a free agent with this lockout going on? You're coming off your best season, nine sacks during the regular season, two in the postseason. How tough is it for you when you're looking for that next contract? I mean, it's really tough because you know you're just sitting around. You don't have, you don't know where you're gonna be at, or um, I mean, you just have no clue what's going on. You're just sitting in limbo. So all I could do is just, uh, you know, train like I regularly regularly do um, each off season and just pray that something happens soon. You know, and, I mean, you rather know where you're gonna be at and you know get a deal done than just sitting around. You know, you're not. You don't know where you're going to be next year, and what's what's going to happen, or if there's even going to be a season. And you know, so it's just, it's very stressful. So last year was your first year with the Seahawks, and you had a great year. Talk to me about the differences between the Seahawks and the Indianapolis Colts, where you won a Super Bowl. Well, there was no <laughs> D. Reed there in, in Seattle. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a little bit. It's a little different, you know. Um, Seattle, they're they're uh, in the rebuilding process, you know, kind of like how I went to my my rookie year in, in Indy. So um, it's a little bit different. So um, I mean, they have a good organization organization up in uh, in Seattle. You know, they have some great coaches out there, and um, Coach uh, Pete Carroll, he he's, he's he has tons of energy. Great great coach. He's in a great situation. You know, uh, the perfect guy to bring in. To a, 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 a organization that's struggling a little bit, and he brings the energy that's needed, you know. So I think that was a great look. The defensive scheme, I love the defensive scheme that they have, and uh, I mean it, it fits me perfectly. So I could go up there and just uh, enjoy enjoy myself and have fun on the field. So in a perfect world, I, I'd, I'd assume since you had your best year there that you'd like to return back to Seattle. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it out there. It's, it's a beautiful city, and uh, the fans are great. Um, the coaches are great. The whole organization, you know, um, you know, they, 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 everything's cool, you know. Um, the defense fits the way I like to play. And, um, you know, the, the, the coaches are giving me the opportunities that I was looking for. You know, that's why I left Indy, you know, for the opportunity. And they, they're giving me the opportunity, so I'm just going to go out there and try to take advantage of that. Uh, especially playing in that atmosphere, that 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 that, uh, that stadium is like uh, the whole atmosphere is like a playoff atmosphere. Every every home game is, is feels like a playoff atmosphere. Yeah, that stadium. That, that stadium definitely be rocking. Now, Pete Carroll had coached in the NFL before, but it's been a while 
Uh, he had been at USC for a long time. How did he make the transition to the NFL or back into the NFL, and, and was he ready? How did you feel that went down? Uh, I thought, you know, we had to make some adjustments. It was some things I wasn't used to, you know, um, you know, because he still was kind of, you know, he's still doing his college thing, and I just, I just can't. It was some stuff I didn't agree with, but I mean, as the season went on, you know, things got better. Everybody started started making adjustments, and um, you know, with the coaches understanding that we only have a certain amount of guys, we don't have 180 guys on the team or something like that. So, um, you know, they, we made good adjustments, and everybody's learning, and you know, we got we got better. You know, as the season went on. What were some of those adjustments? Um, just like the practices, maybe a little bit, change the practices up, um, little things like that. You know, no, um, no pads on Thursdays. Yeah, you know, taking the pads off, and you know, it's late in the season. You know, it's like week twelve or thirteen and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, running certain drills late in the season and things like that because you want to keep the guys fresh. You know, it's a long season. And uh, you don't want to wear your guys out on, you know, practice and things like that. So, um, you know, we made some good adjustments during midway through the season. And um, I think it helped us out a lot. I mean, a lot of people don't know you're one of the few players in the NFL right now that, that have made the playoffs every year in your career. Last year, you guys were 7-9. and nine. Did you think you guys would not make it? Or were you still holding on to that rabbit's foot that you got? Uh, I was so annoying, man. <laughs> I, was, I was so annoying, but, you know, it was crazy We on that flight back uh, from Tampa that we lost that game. And, uh, you know, the coaches say we're, we're still in the playoffs. I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, we got a losing record and we're still in the playoffs. So that was a crazy situation. And then, you know, we're going prime time on TV, you know, playing the, the, the Rams. And it's just, it, it was just crazy how things happened. But, um, you know, it was great, you know, uh, the way it turned out. You know, even though we didn't want to, we didn't get to that Super Bowl, but we was able to turn things around late this season. Now, now you were drafted by Philadelphia, by, by the Eagles, and you're from Philadelphia. So was that like a dream come true when you got drafted by the Eagles? Or, or did, did you think your career, you would do, spend your whole career in Philly? Or, and how was that to leave there? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was – you know, I'm, I, I grew up in Philly, so I was a big Eagles fan. And, uh, you know, it was a dream come true getting, getting uh, drafted and, you know, practicing with the Eagles. But then, you know, I had to leave. They didn't have um, enough money to sign me. Um, however however that happened, you know, so I went from the high to the high to the, the lowest <laughs> that I could possibly feel. So I went to, went to Indy, you know, pissed off. And... Um, <laughs> You know, I was trying to make a team. You know, I was like the seventh in defensive end. You know, I had seven guys in front of me, so I had to get, I had to work all the way to the top. You know, work my way up in training camp. So, you know, by the by the time the training camp ended, you know, I was one of the starting ends. So, um, I mean, everything happens for a reason. Definitely. It seems like you, you, you've done that many times. You did that in Indy, and it seems like when Seattle signed you, they weren't planning for you to be a starter or, or one of their star players, but you, you go in, you work hard, and you become their most important rusher. Yeah, I mean, you know, I just had to go out there and earn my respect. I mean, they already had Clemens out there, and they already had things set, you know, the way they, they you know, pictured that things would be, you know, I just, um, you know, I just, I was just going to go out there and try to, you know, work as hard as I could to try to get, you know, some more reps and earn the trust of the coaches. And, uh, you know, like midway through the season, they started giving me some more reps and, you know, just started taking off from there, you know, trying to make plays like I've been doing in Indy. Now talk to us about the Raheem Brock Foundation and the purpose behind that foundation and, and who it serves. <laughs> Uh, my foundation, you know, I started in Philly a couple of years ago. Uh, we work with inner city underprivileged kids and um, with sports and education. And, you know, we have camps and, you know, 
stuff like that throughout the year. We, we, we'll, um, you know, we took uh, elementary school, a couple of elementary school kids, uh, Christmas shopping, and, you know, I flew, uh, you know, uh, a couple of kids from my high school out to Indianapolis before, you know, to a game for the weekend, you know, check out the facilities. And, um, you know, I just try to give back to the community as much as possible. And uh, because I know, I mean, I know how hard it is for, for kids growing up in the city to follow your dream. You have so many distractions and things like that going on. So it's, it's hard to uh, to uh, to uh, um, to reach your goal with, with everything going on. So I try to come back and uh, get some type of positive influence on the, on the younger kids coming up in my city. Now, Raheem, we, we covered your draft party here on Sports.com, and uh, it was to raise money for Brock's Kids, your foundation. Raheem, can you talk a little bit about growing up in Philadelphia and how that influenced you to start this foundation and to want to help these inner-city kids? Yeah, like I was saying before, you know, uh, me growing up in, in Philly, you know, every, everyone has a dream and goal that they want to reach. And there's just so much going on in the city, you know, uh, we're in the crime capital of the U.S. And you know, people just killing each other for no reason. And, you know, it's just you know, it's so much craziness going on. You know, uh, teachers getting in fights with, with students and students beating up teachers after school and pulling the uh, step the bus drivers off the bus and beating them up. And, you know, it's just a bunch of craziness going on in the city. So. We try to give the, the, the kids coming up um, in the city, you know, just some positive feedback, some, something to look up to and, you know, to keep them working hard and not get distracted by everything that's going on in the city because there's it's so much stuff going on that could bring you down and, uh, and mess you up, you know, hanging with the wrong people, being the wrong, you know, the wrong place. And so you try to come back, I try to come back in the city as much as possible and talk to the young kids and get them a uh, uh, positive influence. How were you, you know? able, how were you able to uh, get through it all and, you know, keep your nose clean and stay out of trouble? <laughs> I don't know, man. I was just, I was blessed. Uh, I was just blessed. I've been in crazy situations, you know, and I don't know how I made it out. You know, I've been shot at and everything. So, I mean, I've just been in crazy situations. I made it out, and it's, it's, it's tough, and it's a blessing. And I had a lot of people that um, supported me. So, you know, that's another thing. You know, I had a, a whole whole lot of people in the city that, that helped me get to where I am. I, so I, think... I, had, I, it was, I had to come back and, and, and um, try to get back to my city as much as I could. I think that's a lot of players' stories. I mean, it, it, we're kind of... You know, it takes a, a village to raise us, and, and, it, and it takes some luck and some blessings. And, and that's obviously happened with you. And, and you can check that out, www.raheembrock.com. Talks all about the Raheem Brock Foundation and Brock's kids. And it's, it's a great, great thing that you're doing. And, you know, I always look forward to the, to the birthday weekend. We're fellow Geminis, so I'm definitely looking forward to that this year. Now, talk to us a little bit about Beast Modes. And, and I know you have a lot of... Raheem has become some, uh, somewhat of an entrepreneur, and he's, he's got Beast Modes now. So talk to me about what Beast Modes is, and, and what was the idea behind that? Well, I mean, I always was into music, and uh, I just know that the music industry is just a tough industry, and everybody's, you know, hustling and, and on the grind. It's just it's a tough industry. You can lose a lot of money fast. And, you know, I was always nervous about getting into that industry, but... Um, Jay Ellis is a, is a guy that I signed from uh, from Indi Indiana, from Indianapolis, or well, South Bend, Indiana. And um, <clears throat> you know, he was so he was so nice that I, I mean, I, he had to be one of the first guys that I signed. He reminded me of of a Jada Kiss and a Biggie type, the way he he rapped. So um, you know, I know he he's been working with Young Chris and uh, all these guys from Philly, Freeway, and he's been with Jay Z and all of them. So I mean, he's been around. He knows a lot of people, and um, you know that, that helped me out when I when I was helped me make my helped me it helped me make my decision on starting my um, my label. Then I have I have a good team now, so I have a strong team. And and Jay Ellis I signed. And then last Donna, she's from Philly. 
I know I've known her for a while, and uh, she's also well known in Philly. And uh, those those are my two artists right now. And um, I'm also working on you know signing this one girl that's from uh, New York. She's an R&B singer. Her name is Danny. So yep. uh, yeah, I mean it's everything is going pretty good. They they're working on their singles right now. Um, they just dropped a mixtape. Um, last down I had Beat Your Heart Out and uh, Jay Ellis has Unleashed. They're all on datpiff.com. Y'all can download it. Jay Ellis has his, his website, um, J-A-E-E-L-L-I-S.com. Y'all can check that out. And, um, yeah, it's, it's going pretty good right now. You're, you're a very busy guy. You've got a lot of different businesses, and I, I think that's interesting. Uh, how do you keep them all going and, and still have the ability to focus on football? <laughs> I mean, I've been doing football for years, so I know you know how to get ready, how to prepare, I got to get ready for um, for the season, and uh, you know it's just all time management. And um, I mean, I love I love doing you know the business, my business side of things, and everything that I got going on, and keeps me busy just in case you know something like this happens, or even if I was ready to retire, you know I go right into all the other stuff that I have going on, I just be able to, you know, keep my eye on everything even better. Now, Reed's really, and, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Good. <laughs> Reed's really into music as well. Uh, he's, he's, he's doing some stuff in the music space. You guys ever think of collaborating? Yeah, I mean, he, he told me about it. I haven't, I haven't really got a chance to listen to it yet. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. I got to hear what his artist sound like first. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I downloaded, I downloaded, listen. My, my, I can't be putting my boy, my people's on, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried head, about you know, that. I'm not worried about that here. You may have to, we, we may have to write something for you, boy. <laughs> yeah, I right. Know. Hey, but listen to this. <laughs> I downloaded, I downloaded the, day, the J. Ellis, the Beast Modes mixtape and all that. And what Raheem is leaving out of this discussion is that Raheem himself is an artist? You are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I got on one track. You know, I had to get on one track and uh, and spit a little bit. You know, because people don't think I can rap, so I just got on there real quick. And did uh, we did a remix to Jay Ellis's? Uh, the, I mean, not Jay Ellis. I'm Chris's silly song. So me and and Donna and Jay on there and. Um, and Rick did turn apart. That's awesome. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's hard work. It's hard work, man. <laughs> Boof. And I felt like I was out of shape, you know, <laughs> trying to, you know, stick up the boof, man. It's just tougher than it, than it looks. We know you spent about a month writing that one verse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying, man. It was, it was tough, though. It was tough in the booth more than anything. Well, that was the hardest thing. I was in there for at least like two hours. Well, Raheem, have you ever, you're a Philly guy, North Philly, have you ever thought about opening up a cheesesteak spot? Philly is so famous for their cheesesteaks. And I remember one time you took me and my co-host right here, <laughs> Michael Artis, to get a cheesesteak. And we didn't go to Geno's. We didn't go to any of those spots. Where did we go, Raheem? Where did you take us that time? We went in the hood. We went to Max's. Max's, that's, that's right. Place in Philly. <laughs> I mean, everybody out of town, they're not going to go in the hood to go get the best cheesesteak. They're just going to go to the, you know, where all the tourists go. Oh, we over there to uh, Pat from Gino. That's a safe place to go, or Gems on South Street. So. But, yeah, I mean, we I took y'all up into my neighborhood and, you know, got y'all. It was it was, it was, did y'all eat the whole cheesesteak? It was a giant, wasn't it? It's yeah. giant. Hey, it's it was huge. serious. I got to tell you something, <laughs> too. The thing is, they have the best cheesesteaks. I've had Geno's. I've had Pat's. I've had cheesesteaks at all sorts of other places, Chickies and Pete's. But Max's, without a doubt, has the best cheesesteaks anywhere. And the funny thing is, sometimes I crave it uh, because they're so good, and there's no way I'm going back there by myself. <laughs> <laughs> If you ain't never been to the ghetto, don't never come to the ghetto. <laughs> well, Who said Raheem, that? Who said that? What about nature? Yeah, of course, Jersey. Hey, Raheem, it's been... It's Wait, been, I got a question okay, for you. Okay, go ahead. I got go two ahead, questions Mike. for you, before Raheem, we let you before go. we let you go. One is, we, we were talking about car chase scenes yesterday on the show. What are our favorite car chases of all times? And, you know, I was just thinking, you growing up in Philly, a lot of movies have been set in Philly. 
and and I know Rocky was huge there. What what inspired you? Everybody, whatever hometown they're from, if if it's been in a movie, you know, usually it inspires you a little. Which movie inspired you the most about Philadelphia when you were growing up? Um, I would say it had to be Rocky. It had to be. It had to be, right? It had to be. That's <laughs> Philly's movie. <laughs> and and then is sure. there is there a car chase that you, I know you're into cars, is there a car chase that you really love that you think is the best car chase in a movie that you've seen? I think the uh, Born, the Born Identity one. Okay. Okay. That's a good one y'all with the seen, Mini. Y'all seen that one? Yeah. You, with the Mini Coopers? Yeah. That yeah. one's crazy. Yeah, that, that's hot. That we got to have to pull that one out. the craziest one I saw. You, right. I, I picked the Bad Boys one, Heem. I picked the one from Bad Boys with the Porsche when when uh, Will Smith was like, that's how you drive. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Raheem, real quick before yeah. you go, how do people get involved in in Brock's kids? Uh, what's the easiest way for them? You said what? Well, well, how they hear you? Oh, I, I said before we let you go, how do people get involved in Brock's kids and your foundation? Um, how can they get involved? Either donate money or their time or some resources. Uh, how can they um, get involved? Yeah, you just go to the website uh, raheembrock.com and. Uh, should, we just redid the website, so it should have somewhere for you to uh, send an email or, or donate on the website. Um, hopefully, it's up. No, it's it's up. It's up, man. <laughs> it's up. It looks it looks good too. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so that that was, if anybody wants to get involved or donate or anything, you just go to the website and uh, hit the link and uh, send us an email. Uh, last question. Who you had nine sacks last season, the most you've had in your career. Who who do you credit or who who do you give credit to? I know you spent a lot of years in Indianapolis with great pass rushers, a great pass rushing coach. Who do who do you give that credit to for helping your pass rushing skills get to that next level? Of course, who else? John Turner. <laughs> John T. Lake. John T. Yeah. Lake is the defensive line coach for the Indianapolis Colts, and uh, I I feel like. The Colts defensive linemen, uh, Dwight Freeney, Raheem Brock, Robert Mathis, those old linemen, I mean, they're like big brothers to me. And I, they're very close, and, and we're all very close. We all keep in touch and all still hang out. And it's just a great thing. And, and John Tierlink is arguably the greatest D-line coach in the NFL. All right, before you go real quick, I got I to gotta tell this story, Raheem. Uh, after you guys won the AFC Championship against the Jets, I, I, get, I go into the uh, Colts locker room to congratulate Raheem and Dwight. And, uh, and, and these guys were just talking so much smack about you, D. They, <laughs> I went in and I said... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a... What do you do? Something, how to beat the Colts or something like yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. He was on ESPN and talked about how to beat the Colts. And you guys said, tell D he's no friend of ours anymore. But they, they were messing around. And I told them you said uh, congratulations because you, you and I were texting back yeah, and forth. And these guys were celebrating pretty hard. It was a good time. <laughs> But it was pretty funny. I didn't know that story, Heem. I, I, I owe you <laughs> No, they actually, at the end of it, they said that they missed you and they wanted you back. So. Nah, I, I definitely missed those guys. And, you know, it's great to have you on, Raheem. You can follow him on Twitter, at Raheem Brock. Go check out the Brock's Kids, his foundation, the Raheem Brock Foundation, uh, RaheemBrock.com. And uh, it, it's great to have you on. We really appreciate it. <laughs> 